Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, 2901 Productions and 48 Media proudly presents to you another round of Absolute. I'm Marlon Copeland. And it's Eric, man. I need a, some fucking Absolute right now. <laughs> <laughs> Like, little pissed off intro and shit. <laughs> Need some. God damn, speed. man. I swear. <laughs> Everything that could have went wrong today with this goddamn uh, setup did go wrong. I thought we spent more time trying to get the damn audio to record right than majority of our shows put together. That shit is ridiculous. Such is life. Man, what's going on with you, though, man? Nothing much, man. I'm just chilling. Chilling, chilling. About to get ready to go to the old folks' home with my leg. Hey, man, just don't call our company. Come get you. <laughs> y'all might drop me. <laughs> I'm so we ain't fuck never drop nobody. Never. If I ever get dropped, I'm so. Hey. Rightfully so. Oh man, like all kinds of shit is broke. <laughs> all kinds. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you not one bit. Shit, man. All right, y'all. We appreciate y'all for checking in. Another round of absolute. What we got planned for the day, man? All right, so we're gonna talk about uh, what is it? Work. Um, no, not work. Um, oh, we always talk about work, but <laughs> that ain't that ain't the the that ain't the main topic today we always been about that shit before we come on here because man we're getting in some trouble if we talk about <laughs> the shit that actually went on at our job i know i would <laughs> <laughs> um hey, hey what is the topic now you said uh a friend of yours who has a a vlog yeah so a friend of mine who has a vlog a vlog um gang gang <laughs> what else she, uh, Sabrina Lawson She talked about Whether Minimum wage Should be raised or not And she voted that it should not be raised Based off of merit So that kind of led to the conversation That you and I was having today about um, People being responsible And their money and all that type of stuff Correct because so, I definitely seen a case of that uh, recently. And, and shout out to Sabrina. I made sure that uh, I, I let her know that she was a part of the creation of this episode. Yeah, and if she has a link to her vlog, we'll definitely try to. Re- I definitely try to remember to put the link to her vlog in our uh, title description, so y'all know what we got our, our discussion topic from today. As she always says, I'm just saying. <laughs> That's like her thing. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that I heard her point of view. I ain't agree with it. You, with, oh, I totally, I, 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 I agree with you in regards to, it's like I get what she was saying. She was talking about minimum wage based off of merit. Um, I think that minimum wage should be based off of something totally different than, than just uh, merit. Now I think you're, you know, you should get a raise or whatever based off of what you, um, you know, like if you fucking up, you don't get a raise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll raise you the, uh, uh, some suspension time, <laughs> some time off without pay. Right. And then you have to come back acting right. But I mean. When I listened to her talk, I think she made like a lot of valid points. I think it it, it was uh, it had it has more layers to it though because mm. what's going on, big bro? It's my brother checking in. What up? What up? <laughs> um, it has a lot of layers to it because when you really think about it, one of her points is like going to a fast food place and how rude they are, or you know, like. When you want to just say, hey, I need some more ketchup or whatever, and they close the fucking uh, drive through door on you or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, totally understand. Like, I think that one of the things I will say is I don't think that any job that's a general laborer, laborer, laboring type job, may not require more than minimum wage. 
Because if it doesn't require a skill, or education, or whatever, then it's just a job that almost anyone can do. I guess. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I'm I'm strictly minimum wage should be based off of cost of living. No, no, no. I get that. It, so what I'm saying is, if minimum wage was fifteen dollars and you are paid to clean a five bathrooms within an eight hour time frame, like then you, you get paid fifteen dollars an hour, and then after that, it's based off of merit. You know what? I actually. Minimum wage should be the same across the board for everybody based on cost of living. But it's just like when you, what is it like elementary or middle school when you mm-hmm. go to school and your teacher be like, everybody starts off with an A. It's up to you to keep it. Right. You know what I mean? So if motherfuckers was like, everybody starts off with the same pay, it's up to you to keep that pay or increase. And it's strictly based off of your job performance. If you ain't worth shit, then your pay is going to drop until the point where you just like, fuck it, you get fired or you quit. But then at the same time, who like that means a person is falling below minimum wage. Yeah. So let just thinking about the law of the land or labor laws or whatever the case may be, I personally think uh, minimum wage should be based off of your the cost of living. Right. So you can't drop a person below the cost of living if that person is a detriment to the company or whatever establishment it is. If they can't cook the fries right, they got to go. Yeah. So I don't think that minimum wage should be like they should fall below minimum wage. That's almost like slavery. Hey, well, we already. <laughs> I was going to say we well. already <laughs> subliminally <laughs> slaving. <laughs> And say we already there. I mean, shit, not already still, but yeah. All, All right, right we so got, we got a question. Got a question. So let me ask you guys something. I saw a throwback picture of you uh, of you and you guys yeah. actually look older than the present. Am I missing the fountain of youth? <laughs> but talk, oh, the um, you talking about the uh, our cover photo for our, our podcast? <laughs> ah, see, that's what we said that we was the first ones. See, all you people that were using that that old person filter, we was doing that way before you guys started. Man, y'all go back check our Instagram page. That's the very first picture, and we have the side by side photo of the original picture and the picture with the app that everybody is using to that just everybody just started using today. We've been doing the old pit, the old. Uh, filter since the nine nine and the two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin uh, Button, what? Not in. <laughs> oh man, but now, but having your salary increased based on your performance every year, as far as uh, a company raise go, mm-hmm. like a performance raise. Then that I understand, like that raise not being even across the board, that I understand. Yes. But minimum wage should definitely be based off cost of living. I I totally agree, but I I think that I don't know. It would you know once we get everything working or whatever, we can probably revisit this episode and have her on. Yeah, because I think that I thought she made some great points. Cause it, but it's it's kind of like. To, to, to dig deeper into this rabbit hole, I say this all the time. I feel like a lot of companies use 9-11 and the recession after 9-11 as an excuse for not properly training people. Ever since that happened, I have seen so many people get people get promoted to supervisor just because they're just because they're on the, sh- I mean, just because they're good at what they do, right? Mm. But just because you're good in one aspect, like if you are washing cars, just an example, because I can't use hospitality, because then some of my coworkers will be like, "Oh, that motherfucker talking about me." Damn right, <laughs> and I might be, but no, that's not the point. <laughs> but okay, here's the thing: if you're washing cars and you can be the best person at washing cars. What's going on, Maria and Sabrina? That does not fucking mean that you should be supervising the entire um, 
detail place or whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, first they, of all, if you need to be supervised watching the car, something wrong. No, but that's the thing. That's what people do nowadays. Like, people, if you if you wash a car better than anybody else, you'll get promoted. It it's in like we're forgetting that leadership positions have intangibles. Hmm. Some can be taught, some can be honed in, but you have to instinctively have some of those leadership qualities. But I think that's, uh, mm, I think that's the purpose of most jobs putting you on a probationary period once you get promoted. Also, man, let me tell you, I know, and I can say this as far as hospitality. I'm not talking about my current job. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen so many people get a promotion and they still have the the uh, entry level mentality. Like, they can be a supervisor. Mm-hmm. Let's just say a, a guest complains. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, everybody that, that worked with me now, please don't. This ain't got nothing to do with my current job. <laughs> don't add us. <laughs> right. I, I still need a job. Um... So, okay, let's just say a guest is complaining about, I don't know, something's wrong with their, they feel like their billing is incorrect. They got charged an extra night. And they're talking to the supervisor, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. So they're talking to the supervisor. The supervisor will turn around and go get the manager. So that's my point. Like, why the hell are you turning around and getting the manager if you're in a leadership position Take the lead on it. If you don't know what to do, you still take the lead on it and ask the manager, hey, walk me through this. As opposed to saying, oh, we got an angry guest out here. Can you come Can you come out here and talk to him? I see it all the time. Mm. And that person should be fucking demoted. But it don't ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> because- I think they just take advantage of some of the shit that they wish... I mean, that we wish we could often do whenever we have complaints from customers. Like, I don't feel like dealing with this shit today. I'm finna get to somebody who get paid more than me to deal with this shit. And also, Sabrina, <laughs> uh, since you're on our live stream, th- this show, you are the uh, patriarch of this show. You and Eric, because you guys kind of was talking about something similar. So just to let you know that. Um. I, okay, so when you are... Even okay, yes, that person makes more than you because that person is in a higher position. And I can also say this in my, I would say within the past five to seven years since I've been in management, I've been in management longer than that, but since I, in the past five to seven years, you actually have hourly associates that feel like you should be in the trenches with them. That's only if they think. Well, most of, most of the time that comes from people who just started and don't know that you've already been there. Right. No. But here's the thing. Like, me as a manager, and I think that whether I'm liked or disliked or whatever the case may be, I think a lot of people would say, oh, Marlon definitely helps. Like, Marlon definitely gets in the trenches with us. Mm. However... I have other responsibilities that I have to take care of. Mm -hmm. And by me having to take care of those other responsibilities, that requires me to be more administrative or more strategic or more forward thinking. That's usually where supervisory personnel comes in at. Supervisors are a hybrid. You're a little bit in the trenches. You're a little bit, you know, checks and balances. And... That comes from a lack of training because we just throw people in positions and people really do not understand what the fuck their role is. I think that's because when you have that lack of experience, Mm -hmm. upper management is like, okay, well, they don't have everything that qualifies them for this, so we can probably get away with paying them less. So I've seen they get they get thrown into that position or they get they're given that position. So they don't know how to handle things a certain way. And then who's to blame at that point? It still falls back on the hiring manager. Because when you see someone that you may say, okay, this person has potential. I can give them this supervisor position. 
and mentor them, you have to make sure as a manager that you are in the position to mentor them. If you're always overwhelmed or bombarded or whatever the case may be, you're not going to have time to mentor that person. But that's, that's just like, but that seems like it's the reason that people get put in the supervisor position. Because say if somebody has too much food, I mean, too much work on their plate mm -hmm. for them to handle, they were like, God damn, man, I need an assistant. I need somebody who could do the extra shit that I don't have the time to do anymore. Oh, let's promote somebody. You can look at it like that. And I'm speaking from personal experience right here. You can hire that assistant or that supervisor or whatever the case may be. But if they're not where they need to be, it makes your job still as hard as it was with the caveat of looking at this person not doing what they supposed to be doing and you're still just doing it and that person is there right so are they being put in that position because they can handle that position or are they being put in that position just so somebody else can take the blunt of some of the shit that that people have to deal with before it even gets to them and they hope that that person can deal with the situation first but that's the thing, though. You should not be hoping. Hey. Because I'm going to tell you, when I was a supervisor, there was so much little things that went to my manager. Because they're paying me to be a leader. Mm -hmm. So if there was issues, I handled them. If there was problems, I handled them. If it was associate situations, if, I, if it was within my framework of leadership, I handled it. Nowadays, supervisors and whoever else, they run to the manager all the time. Mm. Hey, this person is not doing such and such. This person uh, got an attitude problem. This per Why are you telling me? <laughs> I see it, man. I see shit like that just the same way I see artists and media training. Yeah. Because it's like you have no artist development anymore the same with management like the tiers of management in a in a business mm -hmm. it's the same shit happened in entertainment because entertainment used used dexter what are you co uh all right dexter said attitude reflects leadership and then he said statistics uh you're gonna have to elaborate a little bit more on that one bro yeah but in the industry i feel like they use the recession, you know, because we start bootlegging shit and all that stuff. They use that modern, that's their recession to eliminate certain things, which is media training, artist development and stuff like that. And that's really why you have a lot of mediocre music. And also on top of having mediocre music, you also have artists. When somebody hit their ass with a, with a nice home run question, mm -hmm. they ass can't answer it. Yeah, they get they say they say the dumbest shit. They say the shit that they would say if they were with their friends. Yep, As you see that. <laughs> you see that more with. Like, you actually see that more with mainstream artists than you do with like independent artists. Well, I think I, I think the reason why you see that with mainstream artists because in their mind they made it. That independent artist, depending on their financial gain, somebody like Chance the Rapper. He's already he's a very fluent independent artist, so he acts, you know, like the mainstream guys. But then if you take a mainstream guy who's hungry that's trying to get seen, they always on their guard. It's like them being on their guard is their media training. Mm. All right, Dexter is saying it's like sports. Are you looking for the old vet or the young guy to shake things up? You can come in and shake things up all you want to, but you have to be efficient and do like you have to be efficient one you have to know your job two but you can't just shake shit up with like without anything to back up your reasoning the way i see it hey okay in the work in the workforce i'm a little old school i, I would admit that but managers should rarely deal with the associates.
because the manager should constantly deal with the supervisors. If you go get, like as a manager, if I want to go get an update about the department or about, you know, the, the plant or the floor, whatever, you know, in whatever genre you're working in, mm -hmm. I should be getting that from the supervisors. Should be. You should. I think you should. You should get it from the supervisor, but you should also talk to the associate. Oh, of course. Because sometimes the supervisor going to bullshit you. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. Correct. So, with, like, as a manager, you should you should talk to both. But, like, on a day-in, day-out basis, if, you're, if you walk into, like, say we're working in a warehouse. You, you walk in the warehouse. You, you know, manager, it should be more like, hey, how you doing? You know, hey, you know, everything good for you? You need any help with anything? Like, you know, mm. that's what managers should be doing with the, with the associates more. With the supervisors, okay, they should be sitting down with the supervisors. All right, what do you think about Johnny? You know, I, I did see a little something when I was walking the floor. So tell me some things like, what have you noticed about Johnny's work ethic? Those are the type of things that you should be getting from the supervisors. But nowadays, you to be honest with you, you get more information from the associates than you do from the supervisors. Yeah, because associates are going to tell you like it is. Right. And the supervisors are going to figure out a way... And it's not, it, a lot of times it's not their fault. They're just not fucking trained. Or, you know, like, they, like, because to me it's like, like I said, if we're, if we're all fishermen and we're fishing and then someone, and then somebody's in the lighthouse that's in charge, the manager. So then just because you fished and you pulled 10 fish out more than everybody, you get promoted to supervisor. Now you like walking around like shit, you know. All right, come on, get them fish. No, you, you you're not you're not. It's like you you just turn. I'm gonna say it like this: most days, supervisors are lazy. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So mm. fuck that analogy. It was horrible. <laughs> Lighthouse fish. Nicole Simpson can't rap. I want justice. <laughs> Tilapia. Oh man. <laughs> but you know what? It's like I don't know. I guess if you had more people who were to go back to your fishing analogy to that was horrible. take their knowledge of catching those ten more fish than everybody else mm -hmm. and saying, Okay, I catch more ten more fish than everybody else on a regular basis. Right. Let me see what everybody else doing is to and see if I can help them catch catch ten more fish too. Right. And then that way, if everybody catching ten more fish, then we all like we all winning. You're one hundred percent right, and that's what I was saying. Supervisors are supposed to be more into teaching, coaching, assisting, those type of things. Nobody's asking you to do the actual work per se. There's sometimes you may have to. But if a supervisor would take the time to coach and train, cultivate their staff, they staff will run through a brick wall for them. That's not the manager's job. And I can honestly and truly tell you within the past five years of me being in management, I have been more of a supervisor than my supervisors. I, that's probably because the supervisors ain't supervising shit. Like, they have the title supervisor, but if they were actually supervising, then they would see where some of the associates are lacking and be able to help them with it. But instead, they that's, just want to dictate. That's my point. It's, you know, I feel like since I was a child, I've always been destined to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And I never have taken for granted being a leader. Being a leader does not mean being liked. Being a leader means being respected by your peers. Your peers can may not like you, but they if they respect you, that's all you need. And the way you garner respect is getting in the trenches with them, is teaching them easy ways or you know, like teaching them just teaching them shit to make their job more easier and efficient. And what most companies fail to realize 
the supervisory role is the key to most companies' success. Hmm. Because, like, as a man, like me, for example, as a manager, I have to maintain financials. I have to maintain um, scheduling. I have to answer emails. I have to make sure that just these different layer of things are getting done. And I will say this one thing about my current job. We have 75 meetings in one day every fucking day. Mm. And the meetings don't work. But anyway, I digress <laughs> on that. But we constantly, as a manager, you have more, not saying that the primary job itself is not important. Because it is. It's the meat and potatoes of it. But as a manager, you have more big ticket items to manage. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact, for the past few years in my managerial roles, I've done more hands-on shit than I should have. Mm. And sometimes that causes me to be in a mad rush to do some financial stuff or to go answer some stuff or whatever right, and not be prepared for certain meetings or whatever. You know. Look, man, everybody out there, if you... Financials is the last thing that you want rest at your job. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... so you need to make sure that you're doing everything in your power to help your supervisor be on top of their shit. You be on top of your shit so your supervisor can be on top of their shit and then the management can be on top of their shit and ain't nobody pay getting fucked up. But here's the thing <laughs> when you say that, though. Any job that hires, whether it's supervisor or hourly associate, whatever the case may be, you hire because it's a need. So when you have that need, it... it it's a void there and you're going to rush to get that person on the floor or on the in the plant whatever it is mm -hmm. you're going to rush and get them out there and then they may you know a lot of people pick up stuff instinctively but they don't mean they're doing it correctly mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like sometimes you can get the job done but that don't mean you're doing it right mm -hmm. so how long do is management gonna let them keep doing the job effectively and wrong before but, they say something but that so, okay so that's where the supervisory role comes in at. if you have let's just say seven steps mm -hmm. to get something done and it has to be done like this like the within these seven steps like one through seven yes now if someone says oh i figured out a, you know because you don't you're not properly being trained mm -hmm. if you say oh man i figured out a way to pull out two of these steps but still get the job done now, if it's sustainable, you're a fucking genius. But if it just looked good in the in the you know, in the right. interim and it gonna fall apart a little bit later. All right. It's only I think it's only sustainable if they can not pull out two of the steps, but combine more than one. And that make would it be great. Right. But that's where supervisors come in at. Mm -hmm. they got and if you're not if and it's a vicious cycle, if the supervisor say if that person who's being really efficient but taking out two steps mm -hmm. and everybody just look at their productivity like they're on a, I don't know, a assembly line. Oh, shit, they getting that shit done real fast. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know it down the road. Let's say it's auto, automotive. Mm -hmm. So they getting the shit out the assembly line real fast. Okay, we going, we going, we going, we going, we going. Okay. Then now you start having out, then you promoted this person because you see their speed and efficiency because that's what most companies care about is speed and efficiency. Mm -hmm. Even my current job, it's like it's about the speed and efficiency of the associates. Okay, so anyway, once you get this assembly line going and they move and you promote their ass, they just supervise now. Then they start teaching everybody. Oh, this is what I this is what I learned to do. Mm -hmm. Take them two steps out. Then you start having all these damn um, recalls. Recalls. <laughs> <laughs> Recall and be looking back, Jimmy. The fuck you do? <laughs> I got twelve hundred beers out here in my backyard. <laughs> oh shit! Like, and and nobody cares about customer service anymore. It's mm. all about speed and efficiency. Man, that's man. That's all we do is customer service. Scene like man. Dexter said that can go all the way back to hiring, which is what you said earlier. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm old school, man. Like, I believe. 
children of our future. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the children of our future. Teach them well, man. Let them lead the way. Oh, man. <laughs> no, but I, seriously, I believe that when, it's all about your appearance. Now, you never, what's that saying? You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Come to an interview in a suit mm-hmm. or some slacks and a shirt. Look like you want the goddamn job. Right. We don't, bro, you know how many people I've seen come with jeans on, pants hanging out their ass, with a white tee on, talking about y'all hiring. <laughs> yeah, man. That shit is insane to me. Y'all hiring. Huh? It's, are you hiring? I know we're in the South. I say y'all and all that shit, too. You I can be the most. Languages. I can be the most belligerent motherfucker ever in life, but at the same time, I can be the most Brian Gumble motherfucker in life <laughs> as well. Because there's a time and a place for everything. Dexter said, "If the potential employee look good on paper versus actual hands-on experience, you won't know. You won't know till you put them in the trenches." Dexter, that can be said about anybody with a degree. Yep. So. If you got a degree, everybody look good on paper, bro. But people with degrees get hired all the time versus over somebody with experience. I can tell you right now. So everybody, anybody that knows me know I spent a lot of years in uh, hospitality. I have seen so many people get hired from college with hotel management with a hotel management degree, and them motherfuckers can't hold a candle to me. And it's just because of my experiences. Yep. I have did it all. I have seen it all. I've been through damn near every case and scenario, good and bad. So, you know, I mean, I've cleaned shit off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like, it's all about um, it's all about having the experience. There's there are not there are very few college. Um, college high um, managers, uh, hotel management, whatever, that can F with me in hospitality. Mm. They just can't. And I guess this, I mean, I guess that's one of the reasons why they have college students get interns, but them internships don't. Uh, to me, it doesn't seem like just that one internship is going to be enough experience for you to, like, that's probably enough to get you in on the ground floor with your degree. You probably just get a higher pay than somebody else. (laughs) You probably just get a higher pay than somebody else. I mean, I'm not down to anybody with a degree. No. At all. But it just, like, experience is definitely more valuable than a piece of paper saying that you learned how to do it. Somebody taught you the correct way to do it, but you haven't actually done it. Not. Totally agree. For more than a year. <laughs> you know, but then also, too, man, you get a lot of people that get degrees and stuff, man. And they be in, like, the wrong field. Like, shit that they, they really didn't want to do. I could see that. Because you get some people who get degrees that they don't really... Like, it was probably something that they were interested in when they started. Yeah. But their passion changed throughout the course of their college career and they probably just didn't change majors or something like that. Like I know quite a, I know a couple of teachers, man. That, like they just teaching because that's like <laughs> that's what they got a degree. <laughs> right, that's just what they got a degree in, but they don't want to do that shit. Mm. They tired of our bad ass kids. <laughs> like, you need to homeschool that little motherfucker. <laughs> Ooh, shit, that's why the motherfuckers send their kids to school. <laughs> oh man. I, I'm telling you, I, I can. That's one thing I could not do. They deserve, you know. We talking about minimum wage and shit. They deserve all the money. <laughs> bro, I got so much respect for teachers, bro. Cause that's that is one job that I couldn't see myself ever doing. Ooh, bro, I be, <laughs> bro. I had everybody, paying, I had everybody parent in my class up there, <laughs> up in school. I can see them motherfuckers now. They be coming at me with uh, flame on uh, the, the torches the torch. and pick forks and shit. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> bro, I can see it now. They got damn, <laughs> you stand on the third floor looking out the window of the school. <laughs> Everybody standing, <laughs> got the school surrounded. Oh, Marlon Copeland, come out here and answer for your crime. Man, fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> Fair East Side. <coughs> Fair East. I can't even say it. I was gonna say Fair East Side, them motherfuckers. <laughs> nah, man, I feel bad for teachers, man. Like, some of the like, what's that video? Remember that video? Um, the lady was like, "Now class, such and such, and look like, here." Shut like, up, bitch! Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, bro. Whoever child that was, they parents should just came all out the back of the goddamn, uh, all from the back of the damn camera frame, just clothesline his little ass. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. The parents now, we they get into it with the teachers and stuff, man. Mm-hmm. I I I've been getting my I got my ass whooped all the way from kindergarten. To fucking eighth grade, bro. I, was, I shit you not. I promise you. I wasn't in. I was in Chicago for a while before I moved down <laughs> here. And I think I was. I think I left from up there maybe fourth grade. Mm-hmm. But I shit you not. I promise. Before I left Chicago, elementary school, we were still getting whoopers <laughs> from yeah. teachers. All right, we got a comment. This is from <laughs> Sabrina, one of the. She's the. The inspiration of this episode, let's see, as we were talking about teaching, so she says they do, and the moment they feel as though they are no longer passionate about teaching, they need to step down before they run into a parent like me. You know, I don't, well, I I don't know what type of parent Sabrina is, I'm pretty Mm. sure she'll probably get on the teacher's ass, (laughs) but I totally agree, teaching is a passion job. Mm-hmm. If you're not passionate about it or not inspired by it, you need to get out. Cause you definitely ain't doing it for the money. No. Cause them, them those kids, I'm telling you, like if if it, they they good kids and you know we can do the class and all that stuff, I'm fine with that. But all that fuck you, Mister Copeland, and yeah. you know all that stuff, man. Cause it's one thing if your kids are good. But the teacher is just mediocre and yeah. don't give a shit about their job. <clears throat> but if the teachers are good, but your child is just a bad little shit, yeah, you need to discipline your fucking child at home. Don't come up to got don't come to my goddamn school, try and get in my face. I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> we both gonna be in jail. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I just, I, I just can't tolerate disrespect from a child. Now, like if I'm walking down the street. And uh, somebody said, hey, man, like, yes, fuck you. And then they gone, like, ain't nothing I can do about it, <laughs> you know. But just like if I was a teacher, and, that, and I've never had the passion to be a teacher because I've seen some dumbass teachers in my time. Um, I think I told you about one. I won't say her name. But when she told us that, you know, her daughter got caught fucking on the pew, like, why? Why are you telling us this? Mm. You sound mm-hmm. like a gossiper, and it's about your own family. Did I tell you about the, the also <laughs> same teacher? There was a little boy in class, right? So I was sitting in the back of the class, you know, and the little boy was like in the corner sitting there. And he was little. He's just, hey, you know, saying hey to me and shit. So I'm like, mm. hey, little man, you know, what's up? We talking and shit. And she's like, don't talk to him. I was like, well, he was talking to me. <laughs> and she's like, that's my husband's son. I didn't give a fuck who. Right. Who little boy it was, was. You know. <laughs> I mean, I think I was in the 12th grade. So, you know, it's a Tri-Cities uh, <laughs> teacher. But anyway, and so she was like, uh, my husband had an affair and had a, a outside child on me. And why the fuck do we Why are you that? telling that in the class and you brought this motherfucker to class and you babysit this motherfucker? Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're like what school you graduate from? Because they definitely ain't teach your ass no common sense. So it's like... To me, like as an adult, she should not have been a teacher. And yeah. plus, just being in her classroom, she was not passionate about teaching students. Because mm. to Sabrina, to Sabrina's point, when a teacher is passionate, they make the classroom fun and engaging for the child. Because if it's just a job to them, mm-hmm. it's just a class to the student. Mm. Well. On behalf of all the great teachers that I've had, it wasn't many. <laughs> <laughs> Your class was still just the class to me. I was ready to get the fuck out of school <laughs> as quick as possible. Bruh, I don't care what you was doing in class. Your class could be the best class 
of all the five classes, six classes, I mean, them classes that we had in high school, middle school, elementary school. When I showed up, <laughs> I was there and I was ready to go. You just present. I, I was just there. I ain't trying. You ain't got to talk to me. I ain't gonna give you no problems. But it, teach whatever I'm supposed to learn. I learned for that day. So don't. Nah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let me see here. I I had some teachers that stood out to me um, when I was on the West Side. Miss Miss Young, she's deceased now. Uh, Miss Strickland, Miss Dobbs Strickland, she stood out to me. Mister Wilson, he's deceased now. He stood out to me when I moved to the SWATs with all my heart and soul, and still to this day, I love Miss Anna Horror. Like Ms. loved Anna being Hora. in her class. <laughs> I was scared being in her class. <laughs> I mean, she used to whoop me, but I was fine. I was used to getting my ass whooped, so it didn't even bother me. I was like, "Shit, I ain't get." Prime whooped. example: good <laughs> teachers, bad ass students. Yeah, I, I was just talking to. That's why wow. I mean, that's why I got a podcast. <laughs> like she would she would whoop us, but still would be it would be fun. I love Miss Santa Horror. I don't you know. Man, who was the basketball coach and English teacher? Try to see short, dark skinned dude. I cannot remember his oh, name. Oh, he used to bite on the towel yeah. all the damn time. Uh, I can't think of his. I name. can't think of his name either. But that uh, that literature class that he taught. Did he bite on the towel in there? Nah. <laughs> but he was like one of the coolest teachers I had. I didn't mind being in his class. He was intense though. Like he'd be biting on that towel. He'd probably be like, "Pick and roll, bitch." He'd be saying it like in the towel. <laughs> Cause he used to bite the fuck out that towel. Mm, not in class though. He'd, be, he'd come to the huddle. He'd be still biting on that towel. You bitches! <laughs> I told you to pick and roll. <laughs> I, I have no idea if that's what he did. He just was very intense on the sideline. Mm. But he he had some. He had some great players when in my day, which is like twenty plus years ago. But we had some great players on our female team and on our, and on our male team. But I thought our females played better than our males. No disrespect to my male guys. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's the only teacher I remember from high school. Vaguely. Uh, high school? Did I have any good teachers that stood out to me? Uh, no. I know we had one <laughs> economics. Was it economics? Nah, it wasn't economics. I had one. Damn. Miss Keaton. She was dope. I like Miss Keaton. She was the first person that got with me. Like, her mouth. Like, that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> she and, and anybody that knows me in high school, you won't believe this probably, but I never used to say the word dick or pussy. In class? Just in general. Uh. I don't know why they sound so vulgar to me. So What happened? <clears throat> I'm a vulgar <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so one day we was in class and she said something to me that I don't remember what she said or did or whatever. And I got up to go sharpen my pencil. And I was like, man, she sucked my dick. And she heard me. Mm-hmm. And she said, what? You want me to suck your little dick? <laughs> I'll put your little dick in that pencil sharp and turn it. <laughs> And ever since she said that, I loved her. Even though I was mad at her that day, I loved that lady since then. Hell no. She she was a pretty cool teacher. Um, obviously, my ROTC guys, they stood out to me. Uh, uh, that's, that's about all I can think yeah. of. Oh, shit, Miss Williams. I like Miss Williams. I No, I did not like Miss Williams. She was only there for one year, but she had the most embarrassing shit happen to her, and that shit felt great. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. We was in class, and I was in her class when this happened. And she was a big woman. Very big woman, but she was a PE teacher. Mm. <clears throat> Go figure. But anyway, uh, she was, and she could like very flexible for her size. She was a big woman, and I hope she don't sue me, whatever. But anyway, uh, she was um, doing, we were doing splits. She was doing splits or some shit, and then you heard somebody get on the um, PA system. And they was like, "Attention now, Kmart shoppers!" So this is when they was building the new building, the performing arts building. Mm-hmm. So. You can go up there and fuck around in there and get on the PA system. <clears throat> and then after they said attention came out shoppers, all you heard was, Miss Williams, bring your fat ass to the office. Miss Williams, 
bring your fat ass to the office <laughs> and to look at her as that was being said was priceless and gratifying. <laughs> Yo, <ass. laughs> she could laughing at somebody else's pain. Oh, she was hurt. <laughs> she was hurt. <laughs> or should I say he came in on the wrong part? <laughs> that's just that's um. Oh, Shani. I don't know. I thought this was Shani. Oh my God, that Shani. Was... What part you come in on? Yeah, she probably ain't gonna type it. If it's what I think it was. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was a uh, fun. That was that was fun. But yeah, I didn't have to in the high school teaching that stood out to me. No, nah, man. I'm telling you, bro. When that bell rang, <laughs> you I took my ass to class. When it was time to go, I went to my locker, got my books for my next class, and was in my next class sitting down, probably halfway dozing off, before the bell rang for everybody else to be in there. When school was over, I took my ass to my locker, put my shit away, and I went walked my ass to the goddamn train station. <laughs> I wasn't hanging around to talk to nobody. I wasn't hanging around to do no after school shit. I already spent half of my goddamn life in that school. I ain't want to spend no more. <laughs> Oh, and, oh. Uh, Dr. Robinson. I love Dr. Robinson. He stood mm. out. Um, and Mr. Sims, Mr. Dan Anthony Sims, oh, he oh. stood out. He was my. Ba- he wasn't the principal, obviously, when I was there. He was. Mm. Uh, I forgot what he taught, but he was the um, baseball coach, and he he taught me how to uh, crow step. So that was dope. Crow step. Crow step is just it helps you like uh, generate more power throwing the ball. Mm. Yeah. I couldn't do it right now because my leg is fucked up, but. <laughs> mm. I don't remember 95. You don't remember Miss Sims? I know you got to remember Miss Sims. Well, I was just saying I don't remember 95% of my teachers. And I'm pretty sure 99% of my teachers don't remember me. <laughs> That's the way I liked it. Yeah, they probably thought you was a suicide bomb and then didn't talk. I talked just not to them. <laughs> I mean, I ain't. I'm telling you, man. It took everything in me to stay awake in class. That was it. Oh, I know. uh, Mr. Waters. Did you have Mr. Waters? If I did, I don't remember. Oh, I used to love him. What class he teach? uh, 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 Some kind of social studies class. I can't remember what it was. Man, he used to talk about his wife, his (laughs) ex-wife. His class was like right there where the student parking lot was at. Mm -mm. And he used to... uh, you see that car out there? I have to drive that because I have to pay my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I definitely had him. He was like, oh, she, she took the kids, she took the house. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> hey, you want everybody in your class depressed with you. Oh, man. He was cool, though. He was cool, but he always talked about her. Like she, He was like, I ain't gonna never be able to retire. <laughs> damn. Well, I hope he retired now. <laughs> I'm sure, man, because he had to be about late 40s then so it's been what 22 years mm. for me if he's still working now he man he better be the damn principal but i'm sure he's not yeah now he'd be he'd have to be on the pa system mm. <laughs> telling his life story oh it well we went from jobs to school that was funny <laughs> well we worked our way backwards <laughs> yeah but that's because we was talking about not we could not be teachers. Yeah, and you still get in, ir- irresponsibility in both areas of your life. I just, I think I was telling you earlier that I overheard somebody saying, like, I think the catalyst of the one of our subjects today came from uh, your friend's vlog mm-hmm. and. Mine was more on the responsibility side mm-hmm. because I heard somebody lie to their uh, <laughs> their car, their car, not car insurance, but car, their car finance, fi- yeah, their finance company about a death in the family. So because they didn't have the money to pay their current car, <laughs> their current car note, but I had just also heard that person a couple of days ago. Say that they spent two hundred and sixty dollars on some uh, wireless headphones. <laughs> so I'm like, nigga, like your priorities ain't like I don't know what happens in your brain 
that overwrites that logic. Like, I know my car note is about to be due, but let me buy these $260 headphones <laughs> and just fuck everything else. That's Kiara. Oh. That's, it's just because you have a lot of <laughs> immature people in this world. Like, I mean, I've seen people. No, no don't get me wrong. I, I remember I have I had two cars, and I had two car notes left on my Chevy. Mm-hmm. And I was and the, the the new car obviously was a brand new mm-hmm. car, so I got to pay on it for some years. So I got a little Message. behind. <laughs> I got a little behind. I only had, like I said, one more note. Mm-hmm. I made the second payment, so I had that one left. Mm-hmm. Man, I waited about two, three months. I had, I had to hit the car though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember them uh, pulled up to my apartment. It was like, hey, the way my apartments was made, you couldn't tell like it was my apartment. Plus, the car was hidden somewhere else. And mm-hmm. It was like, hey. We looking for an apartment. I'm not gonna say the number. We looking for an apartment, whatever, whatever. I was like, it's down now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I called my mom. I said, Mom, I'm just a hundred dollars short. I cannot let them get this car after I done paid all this money. Mm-hmm. Well, baby, you know sometimes you're gonna have to just learn how to be more responsible. I was like, that ain't what I want to fucking hear right now. <laughs> right. But I can't say that. Though, you know? uh, but she gave me a hundred dollars. Yeah. Is he now? When I was overhearing this person tell their sto- their fictitious story about the death of their family to uh, whoever was on the other line, mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm like, okay, you just you just purchased these headphones like two days ago. If you even if you forgot that your car note was due. <laughs> Cause it's positive. It could happen. Even if you forgot that it was due, take the headphones back. Yep. Take the headphones back. Pay your fucking car note. Yep. Cause your car note is definitely a lot more important than your headphones. Your car, your how you get to job. I mean, how you get to your job. That's your livelihood. You would but, think it would be that more that that you know that commonplace in people's mind. I don't know, man. <clears throat> I'm gonna start you. <clears throat> I'm gonna start using that as an excuse. In everything in life. More than why you late. My mama dead. <laughs> you stupid as hell. <laughs> How they you feeling like, today? My mama dead. And then they're going to be going around asking, what, did she did mama die? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, bitch. Yo, uh, you know, I had that. Well, that did happen to me. My mother is deceased. But like, <laughs> but that's not what I was going to say. So I had a co-worker who... Uh, I, I had a higher position than them. Uh-huh. We both were managers, but I had a higher position. So I definitely won't say names because this is detrimental. <clears throat> so this guy, he did not like me. Mm-hmm. I have no idea why. Because I could have fired him at any point in time. I walked in with somebody straddling him in a room. Mm. And I let him keep his job. Don't know what that said about me or about him. But anyway, mm. digress. So anyway, he he came in. He came. I was doing something. He came in. He said, uh, "I need to leave. My mother died." I just looked at him because I'm like, at this point in time, I'm like, if my mother died. Boy, I'd be all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. I just said, "Sure, whatever you got to do, you know, mm-hmm. take care of your family." Three weeks later, and by this time, corporate is involved. Mm-hmm. He came into the office. He said, my my mother died. I have to leave. I was like, did she die three weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I gotta go. And he just fucking left. <laughs> but you know what? When you was like, I'm gonna use that for everything in life. My mama dead. I bet you it was like ten people who probably heard that and was like, that shit ain't funny. But motherfuckers lie about that type they of shit all the time. It. So it's it's better that you lie about the shit. I mean, if your mama alive, but if your mama is actually dead and you say that shit, then it's wrong. Yeah, so corporate made him like give out like he had to bring like uh, bereavement. I mean like 
obituary uh, and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but they asked him, they was like, so who died the second time? He's like, well, it's my god mom. She's like my mom. Everything is just so hard for me right now. And so the uh, the regional guy was like, well, if he don't bring his ass back to work, like, consistently, mm. we're going to have to do something about he it. He could at least make a better lie. Bro, he's a, dude, no lie. One day I was in a storage office, in a storage unit cleaning. He came in there and said, I need to talk to you. And pissed on himself. He said, I got to go home. I, I couldn't hold my bladder. Right, but you came all the way in here to do that. You and you probably passed like three bathrooms to get back here. What can I say? I can't let him work with piss on him. You see me over, made that sweep up around outside. <laughs> no, he's a he's a manager. I'm just a higher rank uh, manager. So why? Then another time he came to me and he said, Ugh. "I." I can't. I just use the bathroom on myself because he was saying he was having prostate issues, so he shitting mm. on himself. I was like, in my mind, I smelled it. He did shit on himself, but I was like, mm. okay, just just go home, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> like some of you folks need to be mentally evaluated. <laughs> and he was older than me. I think that was one of the things too, because I was a young, high-ranking manager, and he was an older guy. Like, you know. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I ain't gonna shit on myself to get out of work. Hell no! <laughs> and you gotta sit in that while you drive. You well, just drive. Yeah, I got away with that. That'd be all right. I don't. <laughs> all right. I don't. I think I can honestly say I have never been to the point where I had to just be like make some shit up. Like if you. The job that I had for the longest amount of time, sick time. Sick time is sick time. Yeah. If I call out sick, nigga, I'm sick. But half the time, sick time is vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I call out sick, nigga, I'm going out of town. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to tell you, though, you may not believe this, but I have had so many people shit on themselves, like, in the history of, of my work like me as a a leader that's ridiculous like one dude honestly (laughs) i ain't shitting on myself to get out of work he was like so i went into the bathroom to go use the bathroom Mm -hmm. and i used to and um he he looked and talked like dr evil you know arson powers Mm -hmm. him right so i walk in the bathroom man straight shit like smell like sewer so when i walked in the bathroom he's standing there butt ass naked very old man butt ass naked i said i can't say his name i was like damn such and such right it smell like sewer in here he said sewer (laughs) (laughs) he was like he's butt ass naked old ass balls (laughs) hanging on the floor it was so bad he was like yeah I crap my pants. <laughs> so he was trying to clean his fucking pants. <laughs> He's like, and I guess I don't know. This is an old thing. Like they have to wear underwear. He's like, I can't leave until I clean my underwear. I was like, why don't you just put your pants on and just go home and take a shower or whatever? Matter of fact, just take the rest of the day off. Mm-hmm. He's like, but I can't. I have to wear my underwear. I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't. I would just turn around and walked out. (laughs) Well, I mean, I I, I take serious my role as a leader. So I was trying to, you know, be a good guy. I mean, but what could you do for him at that point? Well, I mean, he felt embarrassed. Like, it was. And then another time he got sick and passed out and shitted on himself as he passed out. Damn. Hey, when they picked him up in the ambulance, woo, I mean, like in the, you know, like the Garney and took him. Mm-hmm. Woo. I was happy they were dragging that ass out. It was so bad. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, woke him up and all that shit. You know, uh-huh. He was good, but he just was like dehydrated or whatever. And I don't know. And he just shitted on himself. Mm. 
I, I could not be a um what you do. Uh or from my end it's not that it's it's easy. It's not that bad. I higher levels have I guarantee they have it ten times worse. Especially if they work uh emergency. But mm. Because even when a person, like, what, well, even when a person died, they lose control in their bodily fluids, right? They just piss and shit on themselves, right? Mm, I don't want to say that it happens. It doesn't happen immediately. Right. Because even when I was doing clinicals and we were doing CPR on a guy and uh, and he passed, like, that didn't happen. Now, if it happened before he got to the hospital, then that was probably one thing. But even afterwards, we... Uh, we stayed to help clean clean them up, and everything, so his family could come view him. But what you mean clean him up? Like, like wash his body and stuff? Mm, nah, the nurse did that, but like the sheets that they brought him in on, like replace those, like put a gown on him, like just cover him up, mm-hmm. make sure it wasn't like no blood and nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Travis. Th- hey. <laughs> <laughs> This motherfucker's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's leaving for the family. Mm-hmm. Nah, cause don't nobody want to see that people like that. Nah, uh, you know, real talk though, man. If I had the know how or whatever, I could work in a funeral home. I I don't think I could work in a funeral home, man. This seems so dead to me. That's the point. It's peaceful. Ain't nobody fucking with me. Like all them spirits. Ain't no, I don't give a fuck about them spirits. Like I'm good. The only thing I couldn't do is work. Like I couldn't see the family. Hey, but that's part of it too, though. No, no, no. Fuck, I don't want to see the family because then I'd be crying and what can I do and all that shit. I, I just want to work with the dead body. You mean like embalming and I stuff like that? Embalm, cut open, whatever, whatever I need to do to that dead body, I can do it because I don't have no emotional connection to that dead body. I can do my job in peace. Ain't nobody fucking with me. I ain't got to work with nobody. Ain't nobody. Um, you know, it's just me and that corpse. Mm. If that motherfucker start talking, then I'm I'm screwed anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I can't do it. I mean, I like being able to go to work, get get the job done, and leave. I don't, I don't like thrive on going to like go to somebody else section and talk to them for thirty minutes, and go somewhere else and talk to them for thirty minutes. I don't have to do all that when I go to work. Go to work, get the job done, and leave. But it is a point where like not being social at work mm-hmm. does get old. I mean, you always find one or two people at work that you can, yeah. like, converse with on a regular basis. But, like, I have to have at least one person that I can talk to. Shit, I just talk to you while I'm working with dead body. I call you on duo. <laughs> that is true. Hey, E, you see them titties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, America. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I don't know. Like, hear us now. Marlon, what you doing? Shit. Cutting this motherfucker open. <laughs> <laughs> like, you ain't drop your glasses in there again, did you? <laughs> <laughs> like, they all wear glasses. Like, you did before. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I definitely could. Uh, yeah, I, de- I definitely can do that job, man. Hmm. Uh, yeah, what the time looking like? All right, people, we over an hour, barely, but barely. As I'm always, man, mind. motherfucker got to work at three o'clock in the morning. I do this shit for y'all, missing the three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, if that name has ever been more fitting, it's now. <laughs> I swear to God, it is. But can't make a song about that shit. <laughs> Not this version of 3 a.m. Yeah, no, I'll be violating all kind of hip violations. <laughs> but, yeah. So, hey, that song, my shit, Dexter said that. <laughs> Bruh, out of all the songs, that 
might have been one that we didn't perform that much. Mm mm. I think maybe once or twice. Yeah. I like I like the beat. Yeah. I definitely like that beat. That beat was hard. Yeah, I like that. We had some good times, man. So if you want all right. Matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be in the funeral home. You can be like, what you up to more? I'm like, shit, in here cutting on this by listening to Mr. 3 AM. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for anybody who Appreciate didn't you, catch our live stream of our last <clears throat> episode, you missed out. You had to go to our uh you had to go to Marlon's Facebook page and check out that episode. Because due to technical difficulties and some electronics fucking up. Our whole session got deleted. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, this one just going to have to serve as that episode plus the next one. Yep. Well, we were suppo- we were actually supposed to split this episode up into two parts, but we ain't got time for that shit this time. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but we we're definitely uh our next episode will split up into into two halves. Yeah. And uh, as always, man, we appreciate y'all for checking in with another round of Absolute. Stop doing them old faces. That shit old already. It was old after we did it. Get off the bandwagon. You can catch our podcast on Podbean, which is where our podcast is hosted. You can also catch us on, uh, what is it now? Apple. Apple Music. I mean, and Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast, Spotify, TuneIn, uh, Radio.com, iHeartRadio. Still ain't on uh Pandora yet. Them bitches keep ducking. <laughs> they keep ducking us. I don't know what it is, but I, Pandora is hard as hell to get on for some reason. I don't know. I guess we ain't popular enough for their ass. But we appreciate all the listeners. We appreciate everybody getting us to 899 streams and downloads. Drive, uh, the drive for 1K. Yeah. We probably would have been over 900 <clears throat> if our last episode would have panned out better but unfortunately it didn't so we stuck at 899 get us up to a thousand real quick see if we can get to a thousand for uh next week that'll be some shit huh (laughs) all right and then as always thank you we out this bitch good night bitches